What If Goku Was Emoshi's Descendant Part 2. Since you guys love the series so much, I decided to make a part 2. So last week kicked off, Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. Most of the arc has happened the same. But this time, Raditz is alive, Goku never killed him, Raditz decided to change his ways. As Raditz was more of a puppet to all of everybody else, he doesn't care about them. But now Raditz has actually become one of the Z Fighters now. As for Vegeta and Nappa, they both survived somehow, and now they're off to Namek to go serve under Frieza to help find the Dragon Balls. But we all know that they're going to double cross them. Now, a couple weeks has passed. Most of the Z Fighters are all healed up and they're back to normal. They think that life is okay now. But unbeknownst to them, a voice would then speak to Goku. It was a strange man's voice in his head. He doesn't know who it was or how it's talking to him or how, it, how he knows his name. It was King Kai. King Kai will tell Goku that who he is and what he is and everything else. Now, he's been following Goku for a little while now. And his power was godly. It was amazing. He somehow possesses God Key. It doesn't make any sense, but King Kai respects it. And King Kai tells Goku about Frieza. He would explain what Frieza's plan is and that he's on Namek killing innocent people. Now, Goku understands that Vegeta and Nappa is also heading there. Now, he would also tell Raditz and the others about the situation. And Piccolo would have a little bit of disdain towards that. And even Kami himself, who was there, would even say, I think it's the right thing to do to go help my people, our people. Because those poor Namekians must be suffering because of this tyrant ruler. Goku understands. Now, with the help of Bulma, they would already have a spacecraft ready, and most of the Z Fighters will be off to go. Now, who would be coming along with them? Of course, Bulma needs to be there so she can move the ship. Gohan, Krillin, Tien, Yamcha and the others will stay behind, and Raditz. And, of course, Piccolo. Yes, so that's six people in total, technically five Z Fighters. But now, they would all fly to Namek, as then all of them would start training together. Piccolo is a bit more distant than everybody else, but he's starting to soften up because of Gohan. Now, Raditz would be training more with Goku. As Goku does notice that Raditz does not have Gaki, that is true, Goku's the special one. But, Raditz has immense potential. A lot like Goku's right now. And the reason why is, I want Raditz to follow a different path than Goku. Because it would be way too overpowered if we have two Saiyans that have Super Saiyan God. But, who says Raditz will never get the form? But that's for a later part of the series. But now, they would start doing gravity training, mental training, sparring. Careful not to destroy the entire ship, but Goku's really trying to push Raditz into his potential. They do have the bag of Sensu Beans, which they do have to use one or two more. But luckily, they would have at least two left, just in case. Two to one left, just in case an emergency. And they would only use that for if Goku's hurt or something. And now Goku would talk with King Kai. They would actually get along very well. And King Kai says, hey, if everything goes well with Frieza, if you want, you can come up and actually train with me. I would love to train you. And Raditz would want to come along too, as Raditz wants, wants to get stronger as well, like his brother. Now Goku, of course, is not disowning Gohan here, Goku is also training Gohan as well because he knows, and Piccolo's told him, that Gohan has amazing potential as well. Very, very unique potential, and especially when during high emotions and rage, Gohan's potential skyrockets. Now, as they would land on Namek, a lot of the events would happen the same, with them suppressing their power level as they want to get all the Dragon Balls first before they would handle Frieza. Now, of course, Goku being Goku, he wants to go fight Frieza right now. You know, he, I mean, he hears that King Kai said it himself. Like, Frieza? He's the most powerful guy in the universe. That's it. Of course, he's not going to say Beerus or nothing like that. But he's the emperor of the universe. His power has no bounds. Goku wants to go fight that really bad. Who doesn't? And Goku's a Saiyan himself. Now, Nappa says, no, we have to handle some things first. Because remember, Vegeta and Nappa are on the planet as well. So they would start sneaking around to help out the Namics here and there to not be detected by scouters. Luckily for Goku, Goku can just burst into Super Saiyan God, and he doesn't have to hide his key. Because if you remember, Goku has God Key. Especially if he goes into Super Saiyan God, he is undetectable. He cannot be sensed, nor can a scouter pick his power level up. The only thing is that really powerful beings can feel the pressure of his energy if he is nearby. Which Goku would be far away from Frieza anyway, it's not like it matters. Now Goku would actually sense Frieza and think, wow, okay, Frieza's pretty strong, but he's kind of 
kind of weak. But King Kai says, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It was power. Don't be fooled by it. And Goku understands, and he would, but first things first, help out the Namekians. Now, Gohan and all the other guys would meet, who else? Elder Guru. Now, he would sense that Goku has beyond amazing potential. Everybody else does, too. He would actually unlock Goku's potential. He would unlock Raditz's potential, although he does say that Raditz is a little bit evil heart. But Goku states that, no, Raditz is a good guy, and we need all the help we can get for Frieza. So he would unlock his power level. Now, Raditz, I'm going to say this, during this time, Raditz, after intense training with Goku when they landed on Namek, and after a good Zenkai as well from battling Nappa and the others, I would comfortably say, with his new potential, because, remember, he is one of the descendants of Yamoshi, but he does not possess God Key, he does have incredible potential. His power level, before getting a power unlock, what I would say is around 40,000. And that's not far-fetched, that's pretty much nerfing him very much. Now, I'm going to just say that Guru's potential can vary from two times to four times. I'm going to just say two times for him. So he's around 80,000, which is very impressive. Very, very impressive. As a matter of fact, I'll even it out. I'll, I'll, bump, I'll bump him up to 100,000, just to make it even. And that's pretty fair. Now, as for Gohan and the others, I'm not going to go into power levels because it's a headache, but they're all around the same, maybe a little bit stronger as well. Now, as for Vegeta and Nappa, they would work together to steal the Dragon Balls as well, and they would start working with the Z Fighters here and there. Although they do have a lot more disdain, but they understand that they can't really beat Goku right now. Goku can handle him, not to mention they got to worry about Frieza on top of that. It's just not worth getting into old battles right now. It's to focus on getting the Dragon Balls, which is what they want. So then, once when Frieza notices that Vegeta stole most of his five Dragon Balls, he's going to call the Ginyu Force. Once when the Ginyu Force arrives, that's where shit's going to start hitting the fan. Now, Goku's actually going to step back as Goku wants to see how things play out. And Raditz himself would state, don't enter this battle I actually want to fight. And you know how a Saiyan works. A Saiyan fights 1v1. He hates double teaming. That's not how a Saiyan works in their honor. So Goku understands that. And he knows that Raditz can pretty much take them all on. He doesn't... Now Goku does since Captain Ginyu. And Captain Ginyu is a little bit stronger than Raditz. But that's for focusing on something else. Now Vegeta and Nappa here. How powerful are they after multiple Zenkais? Because... I would say that Nappa would, would follow Vegeta in every defeat that he has and every win that he had. So Nappa's getting pretty much around the same boost as Vegeta is. Now we don't know Nappa's potential, but obviously we know that he is a high class Saiyan. But we know that his power level is around five to 6,000. So we know that he's not a weakling at all. He's far stronger than like Raditz. But he's not a super, super elite Saiyan like how Vegeta was. I mean, Bardock was even stronger than Nappa. Bardock was like 10,000. And Bardock was considered a low-class Saiyan. I believe that it depends of when you're born. And also, too, Bardock didn't care about ranks anyway. But now, I would put Vegeta at a pretty similar or even higher. We know that Vegeta was around thirty to 35,000 in the Namek Saga, but we don't, you know, I'm not going into power levels. I'm going to just say now that he's around 50 to 52,000. So he is stronger than Raccoon, Jace, and Birder, but if they all fight him together, they're going to double team him and win. Or if Jace and Birder work together, they, they would probably beat Vegeta because they're around 42,000 to 40,000. Now, as for Nappa, I would put Nappa pr comfortably probably at around, uh, probably around 35,000. Uh, I would say, which is not a you know, which is not bad, thirty five thousand to around forty thousand at maximum. And remember, too, Nappa's a bit of an idiot during battle, so Nappa would be busy fighting Raccoon. They would actually be pretty even going against each other. And now, as for Vegeta, he would be fighting either Jace or Birder, and Raditz would be fighting either Jace or Birder. Now, Raditz would quickly handle either of them. And Vegeta would probably want to fight Jace the most because he has, I guess, beef against him. So he would definitely beat him up and kill him since, you know, they're both weakened after fighting. Now, this is when a problem comes. Captain Ginyu rolls up. And now Captain Ginyu here has a very powerful technique called the Change Now, or he can swap bodies, which is a very dangerous technique. And he would try to do that on Raditz, which he actually would. He would swap bodies with Raditz. As the two would battle, 
Raditz would overpower him. Psych, you guys thought. No, Captain Ginyu would actually overpower Raditz. And the reason why is because Captain Ginyu has a power level of 120,000. So why does Captain Ginyu want to use body change? And Captain Ginyu can't sense Goku's power level because Goku's in Super Saiyan God right now. He's just standing there looking pretty. So he thinks, oh, his power level is like 5 or a 0. I don't want to fight that, or I don't want to swap bodies with that. That's the weakest thing ever. Now, he does agree that Raditz has an amazing Saiyan body, but he is more powerful. Until Raditz was starting to get on the losing end, Gohan would basically see his uncle get hurt, and he would get enraged. And I would do feel like him and Raditz would definitely get a close relationship in the spaceship and over time, as he can kind of relate to him being like an outcast and, you know, having latent potential. And as you guys remember, Gohan is Goku's son. He is one of Yamoshi's descendant in the family tree. He has amazing potential on top of his rage boost, on top of the fact that he's Yamoshi's descendant. So Gohan with his rage boost, I'm going to say this, is way higher. When Gohan gets upset, even if he had the same power level as the original, the boost would make him way more stronger than the original whenever he gets truly enraged. So in this moment, his power level will go from about 20, 25,000, and it would skyrocket maybe even 10 times that to 250,000 when he's like fully enraged, and he would kill Captain Ginyu, shooting a barrage of key attacks that Captain Ginyu cannot survive as it's twice as strong as he is. So now Captain Ginyu's gone. He's dead. Go on basically save Raditz's life. Now during this time, a lot of the Saiyans and the Z fighters are also very injured. Now Vegeta states that, okay, what we can do here is we can all go into the healing chambers, rest up, and get the Dragon Balls all situated, and then we can make the dumb wish and get it done. Goku would understand that. So Goku, remember, he has two sensu beans. First person he would give it to is his son. The next person he would give it to is Raditz, since Raditz is the next strongest guy. Now, Raditz would get a pretty nice boost. I'm going to say, especially battling and getting nearly killed by Captain Ginyu, with his potential, I'm going to say it'll bump up around 80,000 to around 300 to 400,000. Very similar to Vegeta's power level when he fought Frieza in his first form, which is not far fetched. Go on was around 25,000, 22,000, bump them up to about 40 to 50,000. And that and that is fair play placing their power. Now Vegeta, Nappa, and all of the Z fighters, I'm going to just say that there's plenty of healing tanks. Okay, let's just say that. Especially for Nappa and Vegeta, they would probably and even if there was two, they would take them anyway. So they would be in the healing pods healing up. Now, as for Dende, as you remember, they would still find Dende, befriend him. All that would happen the same during this what if that happens, the same as the original. Now, Dende would also heal the other guys up, but remember, that does require energy, so he is tired as he's having to pretty much heal a lot of people up. But then, they have a problem. Now, if you remember, they would then try to summon the Dragon Balls as Shenron does appear, and they were able to make one wish. One wish just in time, to wish back all the Namekians that were killed by Frieza. Or pretty much anybody that, that Frieza has killed to wish them back. So, he says, it is done, but then before they could carry on the next wish, the Dragon Balls turned to stone as Elder Guru sadly passed away, meaning that the dragon is no longer there. Now, of course, they're distraught, but they're happy that they were at least able to wish everybody back. That's all that matters, and that all the Namekian people are back. But now there's a problem. You have a very pissed off first form Frieza who has just arrived and noticed that all the Namekians are back, his Dragon Balls that he's been struggling to get for immortality is now gone, and they're all monkeys. So of course he's going to be furious. Now during this time, as for the healing chamber, Raditz and everybody else would be busy with Frieza. But of course, Vegeta and Nappa, they would get out of the healing chamber as they're healed up and they have new power levels. I'm going to just throw out there that Nappa's probably around 80,000 to 100,000, and Vegeta himself is comfortably around 200,000. Kind of similar to what he was when he fought Frieza. Now, of course, Raditz would be busy battling First Form Frieza, shocking him at his power level. Vegeta would then jump in and double team on First Form Frieza and kind of give him a bit of a problem. And even Nappa would jump in. Now, I know that Saiyans have a code of honor to where they do like to fight 1v1, but if this is a scenario involving Frieza, they're not going to hold back at all. 
Now, you other guys are wondering, why isn't Goku just going to kill Freeze and get it over with? Well, Goku wants to wait, and he wants the other guys to have their fun first, as he knows how important fighting Frieza is to them. He knows that Frieza has ruined so, many, so much long of their lives. He's tortured them, and that they need to fight him, fair and square. And Goku respects that. He respects his brother, and he respects Nappa and Vegeta as a Saiyan to not get involved. That's just how Saiyans work. Now, obviously, if Frieza beats them and is about to kill him, Goku would then intervene and have a fight for himself. He was itching to battle Frieza, but he was kind of let down if this is Frieza's full power. Now, of course, Frieza would then go into a second form and kind of surprise everybody other than Goku. And But Goku was happy that, okay, he does have transformations, he gets stronger. Now, even with Nappa, Vegeta, everybody else, would it still be enough? Y no. <laughs> Not enough against second form Frieza. But now they would have some help though, as Piccolo arrived. Piccolo was busy helping out the other Namekians, and Nail was badly injured. Remember, Nail wasn't dead, so he would not be wished back to life at like full health. He would still be nearly at death's door. Now, he would still fuse with Nail. This version of Piccolo is stronger than the original. And why is that? Because he was training with the likes of Goku, and he's been stronger since the beginning. This version of Piccolo has a power level of around 3 million. He's as strong as Goku was in base form in the original Frieza arc. Now, Frieza would be forced to go into his third form. Piccolo would still easily overpower him until he goes into his final form. Now, once when he goes into his final form, this is when things start to get hairy for Piccolo, as it would kind of be a battle like how base Goku did against Frieza for a little while. But, of course, Goku didn't have much of a chance. Same with Piccolo. But Piccolo would hold himself off very well. And this would shock everybody else how powerful Piccolo was, but Goku was really impressed how strong he was. But now since Final Form Frieza is here, he would use 50% and easily overpower Piccolo. As all the other Z fighters don't have much of a chance here, Goku would then have to step into battle. Now of course, Goku would want to go to base form first and battle Frieza. Now Goku, even in his base form, after training everything else, I would definitely put him at a power level of around 2 to 3 million, pretty much the same as Piccolo. But now, of course, Goku doesn't have much of a chance here. He would then go into his Super Saiyan state. A.K.A. Super Saiyan God. I almost got you there. But yes, it's Super Saiyan God. But everybody believes that this is Super Saiyan. So I guess you can call it Super Saiyan, even though it's Super Saiyan God. Now, of course, Goku and Super Saiyan God easily overpowers Final Form Frieza. But Goku wants to make a point as he thinks that, well, since you're a pretty tough guy, I want to see your full power. And in return, I'll show you my full power. Now, Frieza would then go to 100%, buffing up very largely. Now, Goku here would showcase a form that he has been practicing. As he's had the Super Saiyan God form for such a long time, he decided what happens if he pushes the limit of this power. Now, with the help of Kami and self-training and high self-discipline, he wants to push his limits and be as strong as he can become. His hair would rise up as his power level would explode. Goku has now... is in... Super Saiyan God Evolution. Now within this power, Frieza would then be furious as he thinks that Goku is the Super Saiyan. He has to be. Now Frieza would make one final attempt, shooting a massive death ball. But Goku would catch it easily in his hand and he would flick it away. Now Vegeta says, Kakarot, stop wasting time. You need to kill him immediately before he might do something to the planet. Goku agrees he would charge a full power Kamehameha and completely obliterate Frieza. The end of the Emperor was there. Now, what would happen? Well, the after effect is the Namekians are saved, and Namek doesn't blow up, Goku never learns instant transmission, he never meets the Yardrats, there's no Mecha Frieza, which means that King Cold would not show up either. But now, what's going to happen to Frieza's army? Well, they're all going to be disbanded, or going to go with the other family and work under King Cold. Now, the Saiyans are free. Vegeta and Nappa was in shock. They're not under the puppeteer of Frieza anymore. They're their own people now, and they cannot make their own choices. They would, I think, follow everybody back to Earth. Nappa and Vegeta would have a similar situation to what the original was, to where they would be like cocky jerks, but they would start to get accustomed to Earth, and Nappa, I feel like, would be staying with Bulma, and alongside Vegeta would also be staying with Bulma. Yes, Vegeta would still fall in love with Bulma, and him and Nappa would get adjusted to Earth, and they would actually like it, because Earth is a pretty peaceful area, and they got none to live for, because Frieza's gone, 
They did what they wanted to do. Frieza's dead. They avenge their people. They avenge their pride. And as for Raditz here, Raditz would definitely settle down a lot more on Earth. And now during this time, Raditz would actually fall in love with somebody. And her name was Launch. Yes, I know Launch dates TN, but I just want, like, the sweet, gentle Launch being with Raditz because it would be really cute. And then also she has that crazy blonde form that she attacks him with. Now, Raditz would actually be living on the Kami Lookout. And for a while, as he wants to train another Kami a little bit more. But then after that, him and Launch would then go live at the Kami house with Master Roshi. Now, of course, Master Roshi being him, of course, Raditz would continue training. And as for Goku, he would spend time with his son and spend time with Chi-Chi. Now, unbeknownst to him, about a year later, a man in a time machine would then step out. And it was none other than Gohan. And that is it for this What If You Guys. Thank y'all for watching. Stay tuned for part three. So show your support. Hit the like button. Comment down below. God, that sounds cringy. And get me to 10,000 subscribers. Come on, guys. Show your support for this video. And I will continue it for the next series. I actually really love doing this series. I really think it's interesting. I'm glad you guys gave the amazing idea. Yet again, if it wasn't for you guys, none of this would be here. So thank you guys so much. And I'll see you all in the next one. Oh, yeah.